Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Betty Trude, and welcome back to Stellaris The Impossible Run, where last time, we survived a completely unwinnable war. So at this point, everything else is a bonus. Though then again, when I say completely unwinnable war, so we barely survived it, and one of our allies was basically trashed so badly, they've now been converted into a vassal. Though that might work in my favour, this massive block to the south of me, this lovely combination of hive minds, these guys love me. So that could work out, yeah, that could be just fine. However, the Spuxilax are rather unfortunately back to being overwhelmingly powerful next to me, and the truce is going to wear off. Very, very soon, actually. Yeah, in just a handful of months. So, they might be planning to immediately reinvade. That's entirely possible. Luckily, the border is ready for them. Might need a little bit of work yet. Yeah, we're still just making this thing stronger and stronger and stronger. But, it's not bad. 3,000 strength right there. We have got ourselves uh, some slightly stronger fleets than we've had previously. We have got plasma set up on these things. These ships have all been upgraded, right? Yes, they have been upgraded. We have got plasma set up. We've got shield 2 set up. We've got generator 3 set up. And uh, we've accumulated enough minerals that if need be, uh, we could just sell those into the marketplace and get myself enough money to hire a new mercenary fleet. Admittedly, I am still being somewhat invaded by killbots right now. Not like the worst of killbots, like the zero index, they're the worst killbots. But yeah, there's some other killbots over here that are trying to kill me right now. That's fine. We've seen them off so far. Everything's okay. The question now is, where the hell do I go? Because uh, aside from, yeah, this little system over here and this one up here, we're pretty much entirely boxed in now. Until we're able to research wormholes, uh, yeah, nowhere else we can go in the entire galaxy. Still, we've got a new colony coming in. The economy is looking okay. Plus 28 alloys, not so bad. Science could be better. Next time a building's available, I'll probably get a new research lab down. Probably for the best. Unity could be better too, but consumer goods is well under control. Half of my trader being converted into consumer goods right now, so... I don't need to bother building more factories, which therefore frees up a whole bunch of building slots I'm going to be using for other stuff, like the production of alloys. So, we're in good shape there at least. Economically, we're stable. But we're still very much in a dangerous position here. All it's going to take is one unified attack when people start seeing I'm weak, and yeah, people will start swarming very quickly. The xenophobes either side of me are both overwhelmingly powerful. The Corinthians are still utter dicks. They're stronger than me too. If they just all decide independently to go to war with me, yeah, we could be in a lot of trouble. Still, get time ticking along here. I need to start saving up some alloys to build up the fleet. Also, the Infinite Pond wants to actually have a, a commercial pact with me. No, actually, sorry, that's not really worth the influence for me. Ah, but one thing I do need to do, actually. Right now, I've got a research agreement with the Inari. Despite the fact that they are, yeah, equivalent to us right now. So that's no longer doing us any good whatsoever. That can just naff off. These guys down here, however, they want a research agreement. Yeah, so we'll just swap out research agreements. That makes the Twitter hive mind like me even flipping more. Which is very, very useful indeed. Good, they're up for that. And, uh, right. Yet another trading coalition can, in theory, try and kick me out of uh, this space over here. But hopefully they won't. And yeah, the bare minimum. Even if the Inari are totally useless, and they are pretty bloody useless. 95 trade. That's not bad at all. That makes that a very, very valuable branch office for me. Right, new war. The Just Can Commonwealth, who are these guys over here, wanting to attack the Zero Index. So I'm guessing, yeah, everyone in the world already has wormhole travel, apart from me. And this trade commission too. Right, so the Zero Index is about to be completely flipping dogpiled. Gotcha. This is why I wanted to put the Zero Index in, by the way, because I put these guys into the galaxy intentionally. Because, yeah, exterminators and all of that good stuff... They tend to really struggle because they get dogpiled by everyone around them very, very easily indeed. Though on this occasion, yeah, it's not going so badly. There are at least some killbots over here. Though, yeah, last episode, the fanatical purifiers were completely eliminated. As does seem to happen an awful, awful lot. Okay, so far I'm not seeing much in the way of, uh, yeah, any additional strength heading towards Deceda from the robots over here. I think we've given them a good ass kicking and they've retreated. So, uh, the main force, Strike Force Kraken, you should probably head down south, reinforce the Spuxilac blockade, because uh, right now, 
I can't see what's going on in that blockade. I don't have visibility whatsoever. So, uh, yeah. If I actually just send the fleet over there, because that's got the special cruiser in it with the upgraded sensors, I'll be able to see whether or not they're starting to amass on the border. Because if they are, that'll be a very good sign that they're planning to attack again. Though just for safety, I should probably, yeah, upgrade Decida into an actual proper star hold. So, uh, save up to 500 there, though then again, do I need to save up to 500? I'm just swimming in minerals right now. Go over to the market, start flogging some of them, please, and... Uh, okay, that's making a fair amount of money, fair amount of money right there. Do I want to actually buy myself alloys? Because they tend to be... Uh, those are very expensive. Actually, you know what? 250 for 1417. Yeah, a buy of 5.2 is not that bad for alloys at all. You know what? Get that upgraded right there. And the secondary fleet, upgrade them a little bit too. Just one extra ship. Just start producing a little bit extra. And hello, the Spuxilax have attacked someone who's not me. They've attacked the Prakiki T. Who are the Prakiki T? Ah, they're the adorable fanatical purifiers that came out of the ruins of these guys, aren't they? Yes, hang on, you're somewhere over here. There you go, the Prakiki T. I've no idea why you've decided you want to go to war with them, but honestly, it works for me. Just make sure I've actually closed the borders against you guys. Technically, I haven't. Right, you know what? Screw you. Oh yeah, the dogpiling has begun. If the Zero Index aren't dead by the end of this part or next, I'll be amazed. Because massive dogpiling of containment wars, yeah, that does just seem to be a thing. Here we go. Snorf has hit 45 people. So I think we know what we need to do here. We've got ourselves here. Plenty of consumer goods for now. I would not object to even more alloys, but no. Don't do that. Go for research labs. We need more flipping science. Ah, but one very positive thing indeed, we're only two months out from a listening post. So, yeah, if I can build listening outposts on my actual key hardened borders, so I can actually keep an eye on what's going on, that will be very, very useful indeed. And there it is, new sensors, listening outposts, all sorts of good stuff. Now, Hyperdrive 2, uh, pretty critical, pretty bloody critical, basic combat rolls never hurts either, but no. Take Hyperdrive 2... Uh, that is very important for actually being able to move my fleet around. In the early game, yeah, how fast you can move your fleet around is crucial. Because by default, it's very, very slow indeed. And we've made a tiny bit of progress with that mysteriously cloaked invisible tomb that showed up inside one of our systems. So, okay, the first chamber, alien glyphs above the door have been translated. I am Zarklan, guardian of Moz Tab, prophet of Zuzva. In a galaxy awash with spite and hatred, I have chosen to seclude myself here. Proceed if ye be worthy. So, alright then. Crack on, please. We've got ourselves a tiny wall panel. Open the door. Keep on keeping on. Up to difficulty of four, but honestly, that's still eminently doable for this chappy. And we do have visibility of... Right, would you believe it? They are indeed gathering troops here. Troops are gathering, and... Uh, it's a terrifyingly, terrifyingly large amount of troops. Okay, so that's... Hang on. 2,200, 5,000... About 8,000, 9,000. Right. So, the Spark Shellax are very much ready to absolutely annihilate us. Again. You know, the weird thing is, these guys are actually at war with the Spark Shellac machine uprising. Okay, it's not a machine uprising, but once again, Slorish, you're getting a bit confused there. They want to go all the way over here and attack these guys. If I opened my borders, they'd presumably be allowed to go and do it. Which kind of works for me, actually. You know what? Guys, 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 guys. Congratulations, I've decided to open the borders to you. In fact, weirdly, they're only minus 95. That's not even that low. Now that I've done that, are you guys going to immediately try and actually take out those guys? No. Oh, yes. Yes, they are. Good. So now, all of their fleets are about to naff off over here and get well out of the way. Now, that works for me. That's right, guys. How about all of you just head off in this direction 
off to do some stupid war on the far side of the galaxy that doesn't affect me in any way whatsoever. Oh, and lovely here, we've actually got ourselves a Tiny Sands Population 10. Boom, let's get you up to being a proper colony. And presumably the path they're going to follow is, uh, yeah, directly through Hulfasen territory. Then, uh, I'm guessing, uh, yeah, they won't be able to pass through Maraud as well. They could try, but it wouldn't be a good idea. Kind of hope they do, though. That'll completely screw them over. Yeah, they're presumably going to pass through uh, the robot territory to get down over here. Because for some reason, everyone's decided these guys need to be destroyed. Inside the ancient tomb, we found a previous expedition, which appears to have become, presumably, trapped inside, given they were behind a locked door, so they were sealed in at some point. Ten minor artifacts from them, straight on to the next, please. Oh, but here's a big one. The birth of the galactic market. Right, so, if I could actually be the owner of the galactic market, I could trade on the market much more efficiently, which would give me a huge edge. Now, the problem is, however... I'm not the only Megacorp in the galaxy. And some of these guys have been doing very, very well indeed. Like, uh, these guys up here, the Tajel Monopoly, they're actually, yeah, the evil pirate mafia lot. But they've been doing a very good job putting their bases everywhere because they don't need to bother asking for permission. They can just flipping do it. These guys over here, I think, aren't doing so hot. And uh, I think I'm doing better than the birds. But yeah, there are also, of course, just very big, very rich empires all over the shop. There is no guarantee that I'm going to be able to pull this off. The one advantage I've got is, uh, yeah, trade of 75. Ooh, trade of 75 isn't even that much. Like, this random planet over here is 95. In fact, how the hell have you done that? That's really good. Right, 19 Clark jobs. Yeah, that'd do the job. That'd do the job very, very nicely indeed. Together with ridiculously high stability helping them out. Okay, yeah, I see, I see, I see, I see. Well, we've got to try and make this happen. Snorf is by far the best candidate we've got, so uh, 1,000 energy, 150 influence. So it's a significant commitment. Significant commitment. Applies a base marketplace competitiveness rating modifier to the planet according to its local conditions. The better the rating, the more likely the planet will play host to the future galactic markets. Right, well, what else could I do? What else can I do to actually make my planet more tradey? Which I believe is, yeah, the primary driver for this sort of thing. Okay, my executives and managers are producing trade goods for just two minor artifacts plus 10% for 10 years. Okay, make that happen. Marvellous. There we go, production plus 10% right there. So that's going to have a little bit of a positive impact. But I think the big thing is we just need more flipping people working in Clark jobs. Right now we've only got, yeah, 12 out of 13. Okay, what could we do with less of? We could probably do with one less miner. Yeah, that'd be fine. One less miner for one extra Clark. But we need even more than that. We need way more than that, actually. Okay, planetary summary. Do we actually really need doctors? When you think about it, do we actually need doctors for anything? Because doctors are producing amenities and growth rate, but this planet's growing pretty well already. Screw it. Tear down the gene clinic, replace it with office jobs for everybody. Alright, we just need more clerks, so as a result of there being more clerks, we've got more trade, and as a result of that, we've got a decent shot of potentially, maybe, if we're really, really flipping lucky, being the host for the galactic markets. Also, we need to spend another thousand energy to actually keep our research being sped up. Yeah, our research feels slow, but I'm throwing so much at trying to keep it up to speed. What else can we do? What else can we do? What else can we do? Okay, bear in mind, we could in theory actually... Oh, hello! We've actually got ourselves the Waiting World event. This actually sort of works for me. So over on Forlorn Hope, we've discovered, mysteriously, a whole bunch of buildings that kind of shouldn't be there. And 100%, we're going to be embracing this all of the way. We're going to embrace the worm, we're going to embrace the waiting world, we're going to embrace any wacky pseudoscience you want if it might theoretically give us an edge. Yeah, bear in mind, in the market, can I actually already start buying rare materials? Is that allowed? No, until I've got the technology so I can actually store the damn stuff, I can't buy it. 
So, uh, for the time being, I can't actually just buy resources to get all of those edicts kicked off. But, in a dangerous war situation, uh, yeah. In theory, this could be something I might want to do once I've got this stuff unlocked. For the time being, though, there's no way to actually boost trade here. Okay, uh, go over to policies. Anything else I could do to maybe boost trade? Just the slightest amount. Not here, but hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What if I actually just had uh, commercial packs with uh, literally everybody? I don't need influence as much as I used to because we're almost out of places to actually expand to. So all we're going to be really using it for is, uh, yeah, edicts and claims. So uh, actually, 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 yeah, we can't commercial pact with those guys. But you guys up here, they don't actually want to form a commercial pact anymore. Okay, fair enough, I suppose. Didn't the Mighty Ducks want to form a commercial pact at some point? No, they did, but I've missed my flipping chance. Here we go, just scanning for empires that sort of like me with the opinion map mode. Uh, yeah, this megacorp over here, they'd be willing to form a commercial pact. So, uh, what's that actually going to lead to? It will lead to a value of both empires' trade networks. So, uh, I get some money and some consumer goods. Uh, yes, yeah, screw it. Make it happen. Okay, we'll get that done. What about you guys, the Almeta Syndicate? Me and you might be able to get on... Uh, yeah, we get on reasonably well. They are overwhelmingly powerful, but they don't actually want a commercial pact. Ah, of course not. They're a criminal syndicate. They're physically not allowed to sign the damn things. Okay, that gets me at least a little bit more trade value. That's nice. How much more trade value can we potentially get out of? Aha, uh, uh -huh. I might be able to get a little bit more trade value out of the Snorf Station. Hang on, go over to the Snorf Station itself. Right now, that is uh, Crew Quarters. Honestly, we're not keeping many ships docked there right now anyway. So swap that out for... No. Off-world trading company is uh, more trade value for each trade hub. Which doesn't actually help me that much. Okay, local trade value is up to 80. We might be able to generate a bit more if I was to... Ah! Yes, yes, yes. Hang on. If I was to actually upgrade Sarpacus to an actual Starhold, then I was to build additional trade hubs there, then each trade hub will be worth another two, but it wouldn't be collecting anything, so it would be kind of a waste of time. There's like two trade we're not collecting over here, but it's small scale stuff really. Instead, let's just focus for the time being on, yeah, locking down these last couple of systems we don't actually have. So, get both of them built, and then uh, that's going to be literally your lot. Until I actually get strong enough to invade someone, and uh, I'm not sure when the hell that's going to happen, or how it's going to happen. Uh, we're pretty much stuck where we are. Sadly, no one can actually boost trade in terms of a governor, but we do actually have, yeah, right now our governor is just architectural. Let's instead... Uh, boost up some science. That'd be a better bet as far as I'm concerned. And we've got destroyers in the Empire. That's good. And ooh, Elgates. Elgates would be interesting in rare crystal mines. Okay, hang on. Before we choose whether or not to take rare crystal mines, uh, let's have a little look see what those crystals might be able to do for me. So, uh, sensor range plus one. Alternatively, energy weapon damage plus 25%. That might give me a nice edge in a war. That would not be the worst thing in the world. Then again, we've got Corvette hull points plus 100 right there. Hang on, remind me. What's the actual default number of hull points per Corvette? Okay, 400. So 500's a massive increase. Yeah, you know what? Make that happen. We're really dependent on Corvettes for the time being. Speaking of which, actually, we also need to go over to Ship Designer. We do have destroyers at this point. Marvellous. And I tell you what, that'll flip and do the job. Tiny bit of point defense, just so we can actually shoot down incoming missiles. So yeah, that's going to make invasions a lot more easy to handle. Together with a giant pile of plasma. And plasma is amazing. And we've also managed to boost our individual fleet capacity up to 30. So okay, we definitely want to be bringing in just a handful of new ships, please. Yeah, bring in the new destroyer. We definitely need at least a handful of them. They'd be very useful indeed. And a cedar is now upgraded, so 1,900, uh, yeah, just reinforce it to hell, please, just reinforce it to hell. And by the way, uh, yeah, listening outpost, let's actually get a listening outpost set up over there. I'd like to be able to see what's going on in this space. In fact, I might even change this over to, uh, 
yeah, target uplink, move that over to listening outpost. Let's just make sure under all circumstances we can see nice and far into the enemy empire. Back in the alien tomb, however, the second chamber. Petty kings issued edicts in my name, empires waged war in my honour, fools sang my praises, I would have none of it. No secret war panels or anything. Keep on keeping on, I suppose. And slowly, 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 start just throwing more and more ships into the fleet because uh, we need to get back to not being overwhelmed uh, by the Spuxulax. So I need to be arrived with them in order to deploy the Marauders in their direction. Meanwhile, over on Forlorn Hope, which obviously was a great planet and we absolutely love it, so apparently there's sinister shadows in the walls. I'm sure it's nothing, guys. Have fun. Totally ignore it. If the shadows start speaking to you, say hello. Offer to make them a cup of tea. It's all going to work out fine. Ah, yes. And over on Snorf, we have got ourselves a, a whole bunch of new jobs over here. Right. Guys, 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 guys. You don't want to be miners anymore. No, nobody wants to be a miner. Everybody wants to do office work instead. Much better. Ooh, that does make me think, actually. We're swimming in consumer goods right now. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Over in species, uh, yeah, I think we might actually want to increase living standards up to uh, social welfare. Because that is a big increase in happiness, which is an increase in productivity. And consumer goods is what we've got plenty of thanks to the trade network right now. Yep, there we go. Hopefully, we might actually end up for the good with that. Like, you know, sure, we might actually lose a tiny bit of consumer goods. We've got plenty of that, however. But the increased productivity might sort out the ever-so-slight food problem we're having right now. Oh, speaking of the ever-so-slight food problem, right, hang on. Over to the market here, over to the market. Let's just actually buy ourselves just a bit of extra food over on Snorf decisions. Yeah, just start basically handing out free food. Let's get the population growing nice and fast, please. Like, ridiculously fast. Okay, the trade value has jumped to 90. That's pretty good. I'd like to hit triple figures. I feel like with triple figures... Oh, hang on. Hang on over there. Now, by any chance, are you guys actually... Yes, okay. There is a second set of marauders in the world. They are over there. Good, good, good. So there definitely are at least two. Don't know where the third are. Possibly somewhere around here. We just haven't run into them yet. But, uh, yeah. There are at least more than one set of marauders. So then again, we're kind of sandwiched between two. So if either of them wake up, it's going to be a disaster. So actually, okay, every time I say this can't possibly get any worse, it just got worse. Now, over on Tiny Sands, we've got an empty building slot here. And honestly... I could see the advantage in more and more alloy foundries. That'd certainly be nice. But tiny small planets, very often gene clinics are not a bad idea. Because yeah, they produce a tiny amount of amenities, meaning you often don't need to bother with entertainers. So between doctors and all the clerk jobs, we can probably get away without entertainment. So uh, screw it, let's make that happen. Oh, and here's something interesting. So the bird people up north have apparently discovered something to do with the first league and know that we're after it. So, uh, we're actually up to four out of six there. We're close by to being able to discover Fen Sabanus, which sadly is not as powerful as it used to be. I definitely saw patch notes at some point saying they'd reduce the ridiculousness of that. But still, it would be a nice thing to have. How much are you asking for here? Oh, a thousand for a First League artifact? Yes, abso flipping lootly. There we go. Every flipping time. And with that done... Yeah, we've actually got five out of six First League artifacts. We just need one more. Right. Now that, that's promising. And what I'm really hoping for, by the way, is... Uh, yeah, the Spokshalax, who have naffed off all the way over here to deal with the Prakiki T. I can't help but notice these guys have some form of massive Citadel station, which I can't see right now, but the game insists they do have it. Now, if you guys would like to smash the hell out of your fleets against a Citadel, that'd be marvellous. Also, who the heck are the Themlarks? I swear I've never seen you bastards before. Ah, you're a breakaway state from the Infinite Pond. Gotcha. Actually, not a breakaway. Protectorate. Right, you guys must have been primitives who have just come into their own, or probably, more precise, been uplifted. And sadly, our physicist has just actually passed away. Please give us a physicist. We do have a physicist. There we go. Congratulations, computing. You're good at computing. Well, get on with that then. 
Also, I am technically involved in a war right now, but it seems to be going very, very well. So, uh, how are you guys getting on down over there? You guys are... Oh, you are absolutely destroying tiny, tiny empires. Gotcha. So, technically, these guys have invaded, but... Doesn't look like they've got too much to me. Looks like, actually, you guys are doing just fine. In fact, yeah, there's been invasion and counter-invasion. You guys have been invading down over here, doing a very good job. Congratulations there. Meanwhile, these guys have been invading over here, but looks like, yeah, for the most part, oh yeah, the Bavia are very, very strong indeed. They are useful allies. Oh, and here's interesting. So the Sidomatus have actually become receptive to us. Okay, currently at war with the Zero Index, together with hating Quactilium, hating the Spark Shellax, hating the robots. Right, you guys may be authoritarian and materialist, but... We're both militarist. Possibly, just possibly, we might be able to become friends. Sadly, there's nothing I can really offer him right now, which is a bit unfortunate. I can't even get a non-aggression pack down because he's got too many of them in play. I could do him a favourable trade deal. I mean, I do need a tiny bit of food right now, so... Okay, you know what? It's fine. Never mind. I don't need food that much. I was able to click on food. Hooray! So I'll tell you what. I'll give you a favourable trade deal. Works slightly in your favour. I'll just give you a handful of minerals. You give me a bit of food. And we will be lovely best friends forever. Oh, couple of interesting things here. One, the Spuxalax seem to be back. So, uh, any chance of that war end for you? No. Technically, the war is still continuing, so I'm not sure why you're bringing your troops home, but whatever. So, okay, some of them are actually returning home, and uh, over on the mysterious waiting world, the world filled with shadows, where some random tomb world people, who we, like, hired from the bird people up north, have reported that there are now too many people, which I'm sure isn't a problem whatsoever. Just, you know, deal with it. It's great. Have more parties. In fact, those extra people are going to be really, really bloody helpful for actually powering the economy. Because, yeah, they're producing enough food that I'm not actually starving to death anymore. So this is marvellously good news. Right, let's keep growth going up here. Gene clinics, never a bad thing to put down nice and early on. Also, Snorf technically has unemployment, but only because a couple of people in the middle class are being sniffy about there being no middle class jobs. So, uh, give them a year or two. They'll be fine taking on some office work, not a problem. Okay, up to 93 trade value on Snorf, which is uh, fine. It might, if we're lucky, be enough to be the capital of the Galactic Stock Exchange. In fact, how are you guys doing? You guys are at... That's at 87. Over here, you're at 87. And you're probably one of my main competitors for this. You're at... Oh, you're at 96. Okay, we're... We're not quite there yet. Okay, we are making a profit of food again, so what we're going to do is we're going to take somebody out of farming and move them over to, yes, move them over to the coffee shop or whatever this is supposed to represent, because Clark's is just like meaning generic business, so I don't know, coffee shops, marketing, accountancy, something, you guys just keep doing that as far as you flipping can. Also, did I forget to ever actually nominate us, because, okay, we should definitely be nominating ourselves. Okay, base marketplace competitiveness rating is strong. Good, 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 good. We're doing all right. We're up to 96. I want to break into triple figures. Is there anything else we can demolish to build more Starbucks? No, in terms of buildings, uh, probably not. But we could probably do with more housing. Well, we don't need more housing. But screw it, more housing. Build additional cities in order to justify more Starbucks. Meanwhile, over in the ancient tomb, we found a secret lever that's let us get access to the third chamber. So, those who wish to parlay with Tsar clan must find their way. There is, in each chamber, a hidden key that must be turned to proceed. The purpose of these challenges will soon be revealed. Right, you just crack on with that, find the hidden key, I'm sure everything's fine. And the Spuxilax is still just floating about here and there. Some of them are arriving, some of them seem to be... Uh, leaving again, you're just heading north. This all works for me, because if they declare war on me, they're not allowed to be inside my borders when it happens. If so, they'd go missing and be sent back to, yeah, their capital over there, which would give me plenty of time to, oh, 
It wouldn't give me that much time to actually hire mercenaries because what happened to all of my money? I swear I had more money than that. The spaceport under attack. Oh, hello! A spaceport is apparently under attack. Does anyone know who that is and what that is? That's oh cock! It's it's the robots and they've okay. They've they've brought a lot more on this occasion. They they've brought an awful lot more. Didn't I have a fleet over? Oh, I did have a fleet over here, and it's going to be annihilated. Okay, um, so, Bavia, any time that you're ready for this war to be over, that, that'd be great. Because, to be honest, there's absolutely nothing I can do to stand in the way of the currently invading force. But on the plus side, cloning's done, so that's, that's good. Oh, what the cock are we going to do now? Okay, do I need more star bases? Not particularly, but then again, that wouldn't hurt. Food is a bit on the low side. Gene crops would be fine. I just need more fleet. I desperately need more fleet. I need more alloy production facilities. I need more star bases. I need more hangars. I need more everything. And my main fleet is about to be absolutely trashed. Okay, this is fine. And when I say this is fine, this is not fine. This war is going very much in our favour down south, okay? These guys have got 91% war exhaustion. And these guys up here, they can't actually keep any of this, all right? They're not allowed to keep any of this because I really hope they don't have claims down. No, they can't do. They're far too far away. Okay, deploy the main fleet back to Snorf. In addition, get over to the market. Sell literally anything we've got, but maybe not the alloys. We kind of need the alloys. Oh, we have got so, so much spare in the way of consumer goods. Flog all of that on the market. Just flood the market. I don't care. Um, sell some more stuff over here. If we can get up to 9,000. Right, guys, I'm going to be needing some help, actually. Uh-oh. Hang on. Guys, where are the mercenaries? Oh, they must have all already been hired. Okay, um... I need more mercenaries. Hello, you guys over here. I need to find a way to communicate with these guys. Do you guys actually know those guys, by the way? Yes, yes you do, or rather, ooh. You might do. Okay, you've got one unidentified empire who apparently everybody's rivaling. But who else is it going to be? It's got to be these guys, right? Unless, of course, there's something over here. Um... Obviously, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Who do you guys know or not know? Apparently, you're not aware of anybody that I'm not aware of, which is weird. Possibly there was a hidden one down at the bottom. Right, guys, I'm going to need your help here. Let's just actually do some swapping of comms for comms. Like, again. Ooh, this is nice. If I give them basically literally all of my consumer goods, that's just enough to get them to say yes. Okay, just make that happen, because I really need you to put me in touch with these guys. That's the Star Realm. That's that's not what I needed. Okay, um, they're peaceful at the bare minimum. Okay, and then somebody else. Okay, some spiritual seekers. Again, not that helpful. And ruthless capitalists. Wait, where the hell are all of these guys, and how exactly are you putting me in touch with them? Ah, you're the guys down over here by the Luxi of it. Okay, so I've got no way to contact these guys over here. None whatsoever, because you guys probably won't do a deal with me anyway. Okay, so I've got nobody that I can actually deploy here. These guys have, yeah, basically knocked over my fleet. They're about to demolish my station. I've got no forces I can actually hire to help me out here. I really, really, really need this war to be over, guys. Like, so desperately, but I'm not sure I've got any way of telling you to please just end this war. Yeah, they've got no claims down, so they're going to trash some stuff, but they don't actually have a way of taking it because they've got no claim on it. Also, they're overwhelmingly powerful, so I can't rival them, so I can't actually send a raid against them either. So, uh, the mercenaries are unfortunately completely useless to me right now. Good! Good, good, good. This is, this is all working out perfectly. Still, at least most of Strikeforce Cerberus was able to escape. Which is, well, 
It's kind of a good thing, I suppose. It's not great, but maybe we shouldn't defend Snorf. Maybe we just have to accept these guys are probably going to bomb Snorf and there's nothing we can do about it. I mean, uh, they're taking some uh, light knocks against this platform. Uh, we are still, yeah, firing on them at least a little bit. This thing does have uh, plenty, plenty of flipping armor and whatnot. So uh, we're doing some good damage. And there's Hyperdrive 2, which is great, I suppose. X-ray lasers. Not bad at all. Wouldn't mind basic combat rolls. Shields would be good, but I probably can't actually fund them at this point. Yeah, basic combat rolls. That's fast and easy. Uh, these guys are down to... Uh... Okay. Actually, we're doing better than I was expecting to here. I mean, we won't win, but at the bare minimum, we have done a decent job just kind of tearing apart some of their smaller vessels. Then again, actually, no. It, it's all got a bit wrong at the end there. Okay, 5,200, 5,100, but they'll probably be back. Yeah, 5,400 with some damaged armor. But they're going to want to wait there for the armor to return. 96% war exhaustion. Okay, how's the war going down south? And the answer is... Not particularly great in any direction. You've just occupied a few systems. You've occupied a few systems. Um... Ah, and still they come. Presumably even more random people that shouldn't be there are there. Great, even more of them. Okay, by any chance, by any flipping chance, would you guys down south of the Bavia, would you be willing to follow me at this point? I would like to take point. If you'd like to actually, you know, come up and help me, that would be really appreciated right now. Like, so appreciated. Okay, this is positive. They're actually pulling back. Okay, they have decided to pull back. Now that, that's good. That's very, very good indeed. By the way, you guys should probably, uh, yeah, get yourselves upgraded, get yourselves reinforced. We do have some minerals. Yeah, you know what? Train more ships. They might be back yet. They can't hold this. They're not allowed to. But, at least for the time being, uh-oh. Did you just actually put... No, 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 that was the Corinthians. The Corinthians are also planning to be dicks. Small problem, by the way. If the Corinthians were to attack me right now, yeah, my main defensive outpost is not actually set up yet. So that's... Oh, bloody hell. Right, well, this is all a nightmare. Um, yeah, just keep reinforcing. You get yourselves upgraded to the new current standard... As much as you can, just shove everything we've got into the fleets, which is uh, not much, but it's going to have to do. Ah, we've got a bit of a problem with the ancient tomb, which is, uh, yeah, unfortunately, my old scientists have died. So right now, you guys are completely bloody useless. Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You need to naff off just for the time being. We need to actually transfer anyone who's got any experience. Oh, no. Okay, the entire first generation's kind of died recently. So, uh, you need to crack on with that. So, yeah, you can get on with that right now. That means you've got yourself minus 60%. So, okay, you do at least have a chance of rolling a clue. So, you're not guaranteed to fail. But this is definitely, uh, yeah, a little bit ahead of what you're really capable of handling. But screw it, you're just going to have to make do. Oh, look at that. So many doctors, so many colonists, so many farmers. We have got all the food we need right now. Everything is lovely. And we can actually upgrade this place to a proper settlement. Flipping adore it. Do you know what? Let's actually get ourselves some... Ooh. Do we need more Unity? Because Unity is coming in so, so slowly right now. Like, dangerously slowly. Or do we need to just get alloys set up? Okay, you know what? Uh, reset the planet, please. Reset the planet. We don't want it to be a rural world anymore. How about a refinery world? Yeah, that'll do. Uh, refiner up. Keep all of that good stuff. Wait, hang on. Not refiner. Forge! That's the thing. Yes, build speed. Get that in play. Get yourself some lovely alloy foundries down. Meanwhile, over in Snorf, yes, 97. Okay, that's done at this point. So, uh, once again, food seems to be under control. So... Less farmers, more baristas. That should get to a hundred. Yes, 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 yes. Our marketplace is competitive. I think we might be the only place in the galaxy with a hundred trade. Hang on, just checking on those guys. 96, you stupid losers. You got nothing on me. 96 there as well. 
I have got myself the strongest economy in the galaxy. Only just, and we've kind of screwed ourselves over to do it, but we have. Despite the number of people that seem to have attacked them, the Prikiki T are actually doing pretty well, all things considered. No one seems to be bothering to actually make it there for the most part. Yeah, people are declaring war and then not bothering to go and attack. Also, I do love how the Waiting World event did trigger on Forlorn Hope. So, uh, yeah, basically, we were so desperate to get a world settled that was completely unsuitable for Snivlets that we just hired some random nobodies from another empire who had a mysterious fondness for living in nuclear blasted hellscapes, sent them off to an Arctic world we had no interest in and just said, you know what, you guys get on with it. And since then, they've just been calling us up once a week saying, right, so the shadows in the walls... Also, there's extra people and we don't know where they came from. Also, all of the original colonists have now been replaced by complete strangers and there's no record of why this is. So, how's things going your end? Invaded by killbots, you say? Right, you know what? We'll just stay down over here. Also, over on my borders, the Inari are currently fighting the Raltec Corsairs. A raiding fleet. Ah, hang on. Raltec Corsairs? Okay, 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 okay. That would imply that you guys are familiar with those guys, right? Like, you must be, because you're literally fighting them right now. Okay, guys, seriously, I need these comms. If you guys would like to, like, give me an introduction to the guys who are currently bombing you, which I assume is these guys over here, that would be so good. That would be so damn welcome right now. And... No, nothing. Great, thanks. And inside the ancient tomb, we have discovered some records containing several technical specifications that may be of use to our scientists. And is that your lot? No, that's not your lot just yet. We've got some more to do. Also, apparently the volume of trade has now reached the stage where space piracy is an issue. I'm gonna be honest, guys. Give it like 10, 15 years, we'll have been demolished by some killbots or something anyway. You really don't need to bother. Okay, luckily the pirate fleet is incredibly weak. So, okay. Deploy our main forces to go and deal with that. Kraken should be able to handle it. Just go and murder those guys. Knock down their platform. Because actually that's free money. So that's not so bad. And we are floating enough money to... Well, we're floating enough money to hire mercs. The question is whether there are going to be mercs to hire. Meanwhile, this stupid war that's brought the killbots to my door. They are now actually at 100% war exhaustion. So they've got to give it up sooner or later. Also, technically, the Inari were involved in this war. They've just decided they can't be asked to actually go and help. What a bunch of dicks. Then again, I say that, they might have actually been sending this fleet round here to assist my fleet that's actually set to be at point right now. But who knows, eh? Who flippin' knows? What I probably should do is, uh, yeah, just keep reinforcing the fleet at this point. More and more and more. Everything that we can flipping forward toss it into the fleets. We need more manpower. Okay, basic combat roles is done. That's nice. And experimental subspace navigation, good way for you to actually escape with... Ooh, antimatter reactors, though. Okay, I can't say no to the antimatter reactors. That's too damn important to say no to. Right, let's just get that done over the next, ouch, nine or so years. And at this point, yeah, the whole Fassens have claimed Snorf itself. So that's... That's a worry. If they declare war on me right now, with Deceder in the hands of the robots, there's literally nothing to defend Snorf with. They would be able to take it. Oh, but speaking of Snorf, we've got it. We've got the galactic market. Market fee, minus 10%. Yes. Yes, I am the economic king of the world. Boom. There is now a galactic market. I am the market leader. And on top of that, yes indeed, slaves. Slaves are now going to be for sale. Who we can buy and liberate. Though it's a bit on the expensive side, so I probably shouldn't do that. Right, people are going to probably start selling slaves very soon. Actually, maybe not. There's not that many authoritarians in the galaxy. Oh, never mind. Straight away, the slaves have started appearing and people really want to buy the damn things too. These guys are very strong. You know what? I'll take some very strong cold preference, people. You are more than welcome to come along. Welcome aboard. In fact, ah, that's a Picari. We haven't seen one of them for a while. I wonder where you actually ended up. I don't know. But yes, we'll be buying you. Marvellous. By the way, I've just sent you to an absolute nightmare world where there may or may not be shadows inside the walls that speak to you. 
Happiness is currently at 0%. Social welfare up, high amenities up, nutritional plentitude up, recently conquered. Okay, you have not been recently conquered. You have been flipping liberated by me. That's more flipping like it. You flipping cheer up. Wow, slaves are appearing and then disappearing so fast because everyone in the galaxy has so much money. And, ooh, you guys have started the integration. Right, you guys are about to become a lot bigger. Well, that's all fine for me. Yes, yeah, slaves are being offered and they're actually being purchased faster than I can click on them. Blimey. Right, there's 1,800 of Inari troops. I don't know where you're going. You're moving to Tiny Sands. I've no idea why you're going there or what you're doing, but you've decided to do it. Okay, fine, what have you. Okay, um, Strike Force Kraken, you guys should probably... Ooh. Okay, I can't actually upgrade you properly. Okay, just head back to Snorf, heal yourselves up. How much do we have in terms of anything? Not much. Not much at all, to be honest. We do not have enough alloys, and uh, I guess I could buy some. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. The market just became a much better deal for me. So at this point, I can start selling... Oh, yeah, that's much better. That's much flipping better. So start selling some... Oh, blimey. Okay, it's, it just got worse. Okay, you know what? Just just sell now. Sell, sell, sell. And buy, buy, buy. Yeah, the market fee is 20%. I think I can get that down to 10% in the diplomacy tree. Probably a good idea. So, screw it. Buy some of that. We do need some more everything, actually. Fleet's already at full strength. Right, possibly reinforcements are on the way in that case. That's nice. Uh, you guys, uh, yeah, you need some more strength too. Start building as fast as you can. Well, we sent our scientists over to the waiting world and discovered, yep, there are in fact just too many people. And also they're a bit weird, but I'm sure it's fine. Just, you know, crack on with it. We have faith in the worm. Ah, this is what I've been waiting for. Traditions. So, we've got a new tree to open. Normally at this point, I'd probably go for prosperity. Because that's not a bad thing. But... I feel like diplomacy, not a bad idea. I feel like supremacy, also not a bad idea. Yeah, starbase plus two immediately, and then overwhelming force very soon afterwards. And starbase damage up by 20%, the great game. Not bad, not bad at all. But here's the thing. I think we might need to actually form our own federation. That could possibly be my best bet here. We need to start creating an actual proper alliance with me and my friends nearby. Because uh, the problem we've actually got here is no matter how strong I am through supremacy, it's not going to be enough to outpower these guys. I need to work as a team. The Federation makes that easier. Plus, open markets is nice. Market fee is nice as well. Uh, yeah, all of that is actually pretty solid. We're going to go for diplomacy. Oh, one of our old friends has actually jumped into action. The Infinite Pond... Uh, are attacking the Zero Index. So, uh, we'll see how they get on. Watch that border down over there, because it could start shuffling very, very fast indeed. And we have won the war! Hooray for me and the war that we just totally won. So, okay, have I actually gained anything from that, or is this just the Bavia? So, uh, Queptilian Primum, humiliated, so they're screwed over. You've got yourself 100 influence, bloody hell you paid for it. And that's... That's it, actually, though. Oh, uh-oh. Okay, so the whole Fassens just demanded vassalization. They were waiting for me to be at peace to do that. If I say no, then they're basically going to have a Kalsus Belli to come and attack me as part of a, yeah, subjugation war. Which is a very, very brutal war indeed. Okay, we're going to say no, obviously. But that means, yeah, they're probably coming to attack us. At least my Corvettes are a bit stronger. I'm pretty sure I don't need to actually rebuild anything over there. That just happens by itself. Okay, what the heck are we going to do now? Ooh, Mega Forges. Yes, I'll be taking a Mega Forge, thank you. And yeah, the borders didn't shift at all because that was a humiliation war. Okay, so that's all fine. Everything's under control. Kraken is back up to strength. How are the fleets actually looking? 2,300 and could potentially do with uh, some modest upgrades. Need to take the cruiser out first. Yeah, it's just these guys need the upgrades. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I've got like 3,000 tops. You guys have got... Oh, bloody hell. You guys have got 6,000 and you're totally heading in this direction, aren't you? 
yes, yes, you 100% are, great. I mean, the thing is, this is not the worst thing in the world, because in the event that they actually win, I have just become a vassal, which is not great in some ways, but in other ways, would mean I was a bit safer from the Spuck Shellax, because, you know, as they say, if you can't beat them, join them. They've only actually got that claim for the next year. I am going to declare some rivalry. Screw you, we're now actually rivals, and now we're rivals. That means, oh yeah, oh flippin' yeah, oh dear. Right, they're already raiding. That's a problem. I was kind of hoping they'd save me by going on some raiding. If you guys would like to spawn a great Khan right now, by the way, that'd be great. That'd seriously work for me. Okay, begin the upgrade. And you guys, head over here because you may as well. We have got no alloys right now whatsoever. Okay, get over to the market. We can fix that. Okay, because we know there's no fleet to hire, so we kind of may as well. That's only plus 250. That's not much at all. Right, okay. Um, Sell goods. Use goods to buy alloys. There we go. Now we've got some alloys. I don't think it's actually worth building anything in terms of defensive platforms. I think we'd be better off just, yeah, desperately trying to reinforce this fleet. Which presumably would be... Actually, don't do it just yet. I'd rather wait for Snorf to be done with the upgrades. But we do have alloys coming in. All right, there we go. Oh, you hate those guys probably because... Yeah, I'm guessing you two are close-ish. Because you're both dicks. Because everybody in the galaxy is a cocking dick. The one advantage we've got is uh, the Bavia will come and help me. All right, they will come and help me. Or, to be precise, yeah, they've actually got a border with the whole fastens down south. So the whole fastens can't throw everything they've got at me, though. Uh, yeah, I see ya. I see you right there. And wait, hang on. That's that's not the whole fastens. That's a oh no, that's a raiding fleet. They're going to they're going to Redamon. Wait, where's Redamon? Hang the flip on. Redamon is part of Spokshilak territory. I don't know who hired you bastards, but... Oh, Flip, they've done me a massive favour. This fleet is actually about to... Oh, bloody hell. Oh, bloody, bloody hell. Okay, guys. Guys, 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 guys. How would you like to potentially gather your fleet right here? I think my leader just died, by the way. Okay, that's... that's fine. The leader is dead. Who actually wants to take over? Is there anyone I desperately need to take over? Honestly, none of you are that great. None of you are boosting trade or anything, so I'm just going to abstain. So we've got ourselves a new leader who is going to be uh, Frontier Spirit. Colony ship build cost down, colony development speed up, and outpost build cost down, starbase influence cost down. Okay, so you're total garbage, but whatever. Still, we have just picked up our first non-snivlet leader. So we do actually have an Inari as one of our new scientists. He's got the least sexy job in the world. He's just going to spend the rest of his life assisting with research. But, you know, it's nice to have someone who's not a sniveler doing a senior job. Okay, Strike Force Kraken has been upgraded. 2,300 strength right there. Get them to Decida. You guys, uh, go and upgrade the fleet right there. And, yeah, just basically have as many ships as you can get. And, uh-oh. We don't actually have the naval capacity uh, to, uh... To fund any of that. Um, okay, that's that's fine. We can probably solve that, presumably. Here we go. Naval Logistics Office over at Fuella. That will be... Oh, that's like a year away, mind. Uh, and Howling Vortex Station. Ah, yes, Howling Vortex Station. We need to have a chat with the curators. See how they feel about us these days. So, plus 57. So, how about a mutual think tank? And they are totally in favour of that. Marvellous. Meaning this station over here is welcome to have itself. Hang on, is it a building? I think it's a building, isn't it? Yes, it's a building. Curator think tank, 5, 5 and 5. Not bad at all. Extra science never flipping hurts. Speaking of which, yeah, we now need uh, more alloys. So, um, back to the marketplace. What can we flog? Please don't be attacking me. You're not attacking me, right? No, that's the Pax Romana jumping on the Zero Index. Right, well, good luck, guys. Captain Nero will protect you, I'm sure. Oh, it feels like the price of minerals has crashed ever since the galactic market opened, which is uh, not great, to be honest. Um, we make a bit of money here. Need to be buying... Okay, the price of... Oh! 
Right, so the price of alloys has gone through the roof. The price of minerals has collapsed. That's probably something I should be thinking about. And by the way, oh yes, we can now actually start buying all of this stuff because somebody somewhere in the galaxy is selling it. Still, we can at least get ourselves, yep, yeah, curator think tank down. Once that's done, yeah, just anchorage and anchorage. We just need enough fleet capacity to fund all of these ships because otherwise they're going to get a little bit on the expensive side. Also, here's cute. So the birds up north, the Skarnuri, they have just been swarming down to Tiny Sands. They are all over this place. This is lovely. Right, guys, we do need more food. So over on Tiny Sands, a little bit more in terms of, yeah, food production. How are we even producing food here, by the way? There is, ah, there's some nutritious mudland somewhere. Marvellous. And one great river. Love it. Meanwhile, somehow we ended up with four people without jobs over on Snorf, which I'm not sure how we got up to four, because there are literally jobs just sitting here not being done. So that's fine then. Here you go. Have some jobs. Oh, look at it. The galactic market floating nearby to Snorf. Love it. It is tiny, though. I kind of feel like it should be bigger. Like, it feels a lot smaller than even just, like, a basic star base. It definitely feels like it should be at least a little bit bigger. Oh, and good news as well. The whole Fassens have been distracted from this whole business of invading me to go and attack the Prakiki T. And they actually are a lot closer. So, uh, this works for me. They're welcome to try and do that. Hopefully, they'll have their fleet smashed apart by a series of really tough star holds. Uh, that's going to be brilliant. And star base capacity is going up. Okay. This is good. This is all fine. Everything's under control. Naval capacity plus 30. Yes, need that. We're actually starting to build a fleet now. Ah, sadly, I missed the raid. At some point, there was a raid against this spot over here. So, doesn't seem to have done a huge amount. Oh, bloody hell. Right, so the Spug Shellacs are now actually amassing about 2,000 strength in army just outside my territory. Good. Good, good, good. I'm glad about that. I'm so thrilled about this situation. Are you guys even at war with anyone right now? Technically, you are actually at war with those guys, so hopefully that'll keep you busy for the time being. And here's something of interest too. So over here in Vigimar, tiny little corner of my empire, we've got some continental worlds. And apparently, we have access to, uh, yeah, a couple of people who are rather good on the old continental preferences. So, uh, very strong, uh, sociologists, slow learners and quarrelsome, but honestly, it doesn't really matter so much. Anyone else who's good at the old uh, continental business? No, that's a lot. So, uh, you guys are from... I don't actually know. I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure I actually really like this change in Stellaris, where now, if you've just got a migration treaty, you can just create a colony ship. I feel like it feels a bit more meaningful if you actually have to wait for a pop to be inside your empire, because... I don't even know where these guys have come from, but I do know they're very strong, and this territory is full of mines. So, yeah, we'll definitely be sorting that out. And you know what? This is barely even colonization. This here is just hiring some of the Kuava docks and saying, hey, here's a planet, go mine it for us. We'll pay you, you hand us the minerals. It's a deal. So this is just going to be the Kuava docks mining outpost. Everything's going to be fine. Okay, the ancient tomb has slowed right down because our scientists are all young and inexperienced, but we finally broke it into the fourth chamber here. There is none. The challenges are as meaningless as these words. Uh, that is my lesson. I am Zarklan, the pawn, swept along by the currents of history against my will. Uh, proceed, and an audience shall be yours, uh, should one still be of interest. Okay, so uh, he pretended there was some great meaningful mystery to his tomb, uh, but there wasn't one at all. It was just a bunch of random, well-hidden stuff. Aha! The Hulfassans are no longer domineering. They're just hostile again. However, yeah, these guys uh, have now gone over to uh, domineering. So they now want to vassalize us. Oh, that's what I wanted to see. The alloy mega forges are ready to go. And uh, so the civilian fabricators, we could get that done next. But I feel like we need to avoid that and... Uh, Oh, that's lovely. The tenants of Tabby have decided they love aliens a lot. Well, that's nice. The aliens probably gave them some lovely scritches under the neck. You know what? Let's get exotic gases in. We're probably going to need exotic gases sooner or later. So let's start gathering all of that together. Everything's going to be okay. In fact, yeah. Tenants of Tabby, let's just actually check in with you guys right now. So you are now egalitarian, spiritualist, and xenophile. So 
Oh, that's nice. You kind of like me. Admittedly, you are also telling me to naff the hell off. But, uh, you know what? That's pretty typical tabby behavior. Simultaneously, I like you, but also I'm going to scratch you if you try and pet me while I'm sleeping. Ooh, but hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's a first league artifact. That's the final one. Okay, what's the price? 500 energy. That's literally it. Oh, flip. That's... That's all of them. That's... That's all of them. Yes! First League Home System. Where is it? Where the flip is it? Fen Habanis. Yes. Oh, flip. We found it. It's right next to the black hole that the worm lives in. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Right. Get in there. Scan it. Right the hell now. You're a little bit busy. Okay, um... You... Uh, get over there. Scan it right now. Now... It seems very unlikely that anyone would, you know, go out of their way to try and snipe it. But just in case, get there first, or I get there first, Fensabarnis. Which is, uh, yeah, a relic world, uh, not actually a giant city planet anymore. But it's still pretty badass. Meanwhile, our fleet is slowly starting to get in the direction it needs to be. We're up to, yeah, about 4,000 fleet strength. Add on about 3,000 plus bonuses from, yeah, the various star holds at our borders. We might have a chance at actually holding off an invasion, okay? It's not much of a chance, but it's getting there. Also, I totally forgot that the messenger's just floating around here in this spiraling pod, so we should really go and check that out, too. And actually, the sociologist should probably get on with studying, yeah, the space squiddies. Because uh, sometimes, okay, you just said five months a second ago, screw you. Because, yeah, sometimes uh, you can get yourself some really nice permanent empire-wide bonuses just from studying creatures. Ooh, and the integration is complete down here nice and fast. So the Bavia are now flipping massive, and I love them. And after a few worries, yeah, I've got listening outposts set of both of my harsh borders against the xenophobes. Nobody is amassing troops at the border. Now, there are some armies starting to actually gather up here, and... Ouch, that's getting more expensive. Okay, pay it. Pay it. Oh, bloody hell, all my money's gone. That's fine. Everything's under control. There we go. Not the best one, the Tianki. Yeah, that's frequency tuning, which if I recall correctly is uh, hardly spectacular. Uh, that is... What does that do again? Ah, yes. Energy siphon. Not terrible, but yeah, keep focusing on boosting our naval capacity because uh, we're definitely starting to run low on that. And the scanning of Fenhabarnis has begun. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'll be helping myself to a relic world. In fact, actually, I'll have two. Once I'm actually able to take out Shard, I'm going to have flipping double relic worlds, and it's going to be the best thing ever. Okay, energy's looking a bit on the dodgy side, but we kind of need to just completely put that aside uh, for the moment. Ah, but, hang on. The more efficient way to take care of that would probably be... Uh, yeah, over here on this already designated forge world, because uh, what do we actually need to upgrade those? Okay, we need some volatile moats. Presumably we can actually buy those in the market right now. Yeah, actually, we can. So if I just buy those immediately, we don't need them for anything else. So uh, yeah, let's actually just get that upgraded. So uh, screw it, get that upgraded to, ah, oh, that's three extra jobs. Oh, but the upkeep, that's gonna be a bit tricky, but screw it, make it happen anyway. Right, okay, so we need to start buying these on the regular. So buy just one, how much do they cost? Ouch, they're really expensive. That's so expensive. That's okay, hang on. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. What we need to do instead is get hold of our own. Because we've totally got some somewhere in our empire. I'm sure I saw some. Yes, there we go. Volatile moats right there. We just need moat stabilization. Which unfortunately hasn't actually shown up yet, which is a bit of a problem. Right, you know what? We'll just like buy 50 of them. It'll all be under control. Everything's going to be fine. And Snorf's actually got... Ah, oh, Snorf's got 50 as well. Ah, oh, love it. Right, Snorf, what do you need? You know, it wouldn't hurt just to have even more research labs. That would not be the worst thing in the world. And actually, everybody's got an empty slot all of a sudden. Right, what do you guys need? Actually, what we really need is energy. We really, really need energy. So, uh, Forlorn Hope could actually be a decent generator world. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Yeah, you know what? Get that in play. We need some of that. Snorf, meanwhile, you guys need... 
How's amenities? Amenities is fine for the moment. You know what? You guys can have your gene clinics back because, yeah, bonus to growth and a few more amenities. Uh, just have them back. We might well get rid of it in future, but it's not bad to keep that place growing as fast as possible for the minute. Also, our oh, Fen Habanis is not just going to be the source of an amazing relic world. Uh, it's actually also got itself. Yes, Fen Habanis 3. Love it. And as we already know, yep, yeah, there were billions and billions on this planet. And unfortunately, when the Empire fell apart, they couldn't feed themselves because the food stopped being imported. But we do get a giant pile of unity, giant pile of society research, giant pile of influence, and a minor artifact action unlocked, Secrets of the First League. Hello there, sexy. What is that when it's at home? Okay, it's a special project. Yeah, flippin' do it. What is that precisely? It's a major project for my engineers. I've no idea what this does, but screw it, make it happen. Oh, and look at it. Size 25 Relic World. Uh, firstly, capital, so... Oh, it just comes with free society physics and engineering research. Yes, 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 yes. And even better, in a wonderful poetic twist, by discovering the First League capital, we have actually just unlocked the ability to form our own new First League, which is just wonderful. So, uh, yes, the Federation is now ready to be unlocked. And guys, 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 I think it's time for us to formally become super friends. Ah, the problem is they're hive minds, so they're not desperately 100% keen on it. Okay, what about you guys next door? You guys would be willing to... Okay, you guys better be willing to... Oh, no. No, they won't because they're not at peace. Right, so no one's willing to be in my new club with me. Marvellous. Oh, you gotta love Fen Habanis. Comes with a guaranteed plus 10 minerals, uh, plus 10 energy. Uh, the sun's a plus 2 as well. And I believe you guys are almost done. Uh, one more. One more to go. And then this system is mine. System survey complete. System survey complete, says Tali. Starbase gets constructed. Boom. You, by the way, get down over here and... No, you can't actually do that project because the scientist is the wrong species. Right, well, that's a bit unfortunate. Where's the scientist of the right species? Ah, probably just done with this and... Uh-oh. Okay, so... Is my scientist okay? Because apparently there was a Resident Evil movie-style laser grid going on, so... An ancient but still functional laser grid was inadvertently triggered. Fortunately, thanks to... Oh, good. The scientist is A-OK. -okay. Everything is under control. So, the lasers were disabled before they caused any harm. Did we actually find... No, nope, no, you've got more flipping digging to do yet. Right, swap around these two scientists because they're both physics focused level 2, so it doesn't really matter. So, uh, congratulations. You're now researching... I think cold fusion or antimatter reactors or something. Like something sciencey. Just get on with something sciencey. And that means you can get over here and study the messenger. Because yes indeed, we love the worm, we embrace the worm, everything is fine. You know, I'm really damn jealous of this side of the galaxy. Alright, they've got a working federation. They've got people who are associated with that federation. They've got a bunch of lovely happy people who get on. What have I got? I've just got xenophobes, the xenophobe flipping fallen empire, hive minds who don't want to buy my toasters. Everything is terrible. Aside from Fen Habanis, of course. Fen Habanis is amazing. And uh, we have got ourselves... Uh, oh, we've got ourselves a planet. Right, guys, get over there. We're colonising it and... Uh, I'd say, wait, where are my guys? There we go. Send my own guys down there because, yes, everybody can live on a relic world. Apparently, it's kind of like a guy world, but maybe not quite as good. Right, send them over. And, yep, yeah, this is just going to be Fen Habanis. Keep its name as it is in honor of the First League. Over on Forlorn Hope, set up a corporate culture site because, yeah, we are a little bit lacking in unity right now. It's very slow progress at the minute. Very slow progress indeed. Oh, there's the naval capacity. Good. So we've got plenty of space to build some more ships now. And uh, fleet limit up too. That'd be nice. That'd be very, very nice indeed. Uh, yeah, make it happen. More ships per fleet would not hurt at all. So uh, we're getting somewhere. Slowly but surely. And when I say slowly but surely, this is uh, expensive stuff. You know what? Toss some more flipping alloys. Add some more ships here. We do need more ships, all right? That's pretty bloody important. Also, the enigmatic cash just showed up in Cider. Where are you going these days, by the way? You're just making your way over to... Uh, yeah, I think it's making its way over to Snorf. 
I like this thing. It's just a big toilet roll tube that goes through space helping out science. And, oh, okay. Was that an expansion of... Uh, yep, there's a bit of an expansion of the Empire over there. So, uh, Stellar Compact, you guys have decided to join... Uh, Wait, which guys are you guys again? Ah, they're all the way down over here. Right, I'm guessing you guys have got yourselves a... You must have a little bit of a wormhole or something, right? Otherwise, how on earth did you just join? Right, there must be a wormhole here we can't see. Also, everyone in the world is suddenly begging for associate status with this here federation. Like, literally everybody. Would you guys be willing to give it to me as well? No. No, they are not willing to do that because... Oh, right. Stupid pacifist. Okay. Tabby, can I come into your club? No. Unfortunately, she is not willing to give that to me because of an unfriendly attitude. Okay, fine. What have you? And yeah, more corporate culture sites down over on Tiny Sands. We definitely need to sort out the problem with Unity. So that's going to not quite double, but not too far off double the amount of Unity we've got coming in. So everything's fine. Everything's under control. This person's also studying the messenger. Everything's good. Uh-oh. We've got problems. We've got really big problems. The Spock Shellax just made peace with the Prakiki T. Meaning they've finally given up trying to do anything over there. And that means they're more likely to potentially come and attack me. That's... That's not good. Also, yes, the giant space toilet roll tube has shown up. We will indeed study it. We'll give it a quick study. It's fine. Actually, we're a bit busy with the secrets of the First League right now, so maybe we'll get back to him later if he hasn't naffed off. So, the messenger. Like a snivelet, but not quite. Like there might be some form of common ancestor. Yes, please proceed. Alright, study the messenger, figure it out. That's probably a new bloody thing I need to do as well, isn't it? Yes, crack on with that too. Just crack on with all the special projects. This is nice though. Free gift from... Aha! The Akana Mandate. You guys are the tiny, tiny empire right here. Okay, how would you guys like to... Well, to be honest, you're not even worth bothering with a branch office. Not really. I could offer them... Ooh! Okay, that's not bad. They'd be willing to become a subsidiary of ours. That's nice. And also, they will join us in our war. So, if the whole Fassens ever did attack us, I'd have an enemy behind enemy lines. You know what? I'm not going to say no. I will take 25% of all your energy in the world. Marvellous. Welcome aboard. There we go. So that's going to be a bit of extra money, which is... Oh, that's a lot of extra money, actually. Right. Hopefully I've not just, like, you know, crippled your economy through taxation, because that does sometimes happen. And, of course, if you're familiar with the event chain, it won't be any surprise to you to know that, yes, Lydia Marshall, the scientist who was doing the work on the messenger, has undergone a slight change, which is... She's now a donkey. Marvellous. You know what? Excellent idea. You just crack on with your work, Lydia. There she is. Bit more of a close-up as to what Lydia looks like these days. Oh, the antimatter reactor. Ready to go. That's a big one. That's a very, very big one indeed. And with that, we can almost certainly fund... Uh, yep, shields. Get working on some shields, please. So, Lydia Marshall, the donkey woman, has decided that everyone should now be a donkey. And has, in fact, created a highly infectious retro agent to make sure that actually happens. So... While I wouldn't mind converting my entire people into donkey people, I kind of like the snifflets. They're adorable. So we're going to say our capital is going to be affected, but nowhere else, because I would like some snifflets to actually, you know, survive. So uh, control the outbreak. There we go. So now, now everybody I think should be a donkey. Yes, everyone is now a donkey. This person's not a donkey though. So yeah, the core traits are unchanged. The key thing is it flips one of your ideologies. So uh, pacifist has just become a much larger part of my empire than it was previously because every single one of these donkeys is now pacifist. When previously there would have been a lot of militarism because yeah, we're partly militarist, partly xenophile. So uh, yeah, pacifism, as soon as we actually get up to uh, the next month, is going to... Probably it's going to update in a second. Okay, it hasn't yet. Yes, there we go. Actually, while it says 9%, it also says 61% in the tooltip. So, uh, pacifism just became a pretty bloody big deal. Okay, the mining outpost is down. Welcome aboard, lads. So, we know what we're going to be doing here, obviously. We're going to be wanting a giant pile of mines. And before we actually do that, make sure we actually set this up as 
a mining world. Yes, mine output plus 20%. Beautiful. Get that sorted out. Now, build some mines. Good, good, good. And did I just hear the wobbly whoop of that bloody tomb finally being 100% completed? Yes. Yes, it is. Bloody hell, that took a while. Also, if there was a window in the room, why didn't we just come through the window? Bloody hell, guys. Always check for a Skyrim door first. So in the last chamber, a gigantic throne holds the slumped and motionless form of a large humanoid figure. A horrible smell hints at the decayed state of the being's body. Some glyphs at the bottom of the throne read simply, Zarglan, at your service. The body is too far gone to be moved, but the head is surprisingly well preserved given its age. Not wanting to leave empty-handed, some archaeologists use a laser cutter to remove the head. You are the worst archaeologists. Well, on the plus side, we've actually picked up our first proper relic, the head of Zarglan, which apparently we've just decided to, I don't know, ship back to the capital and show off or something. Ooh, but hang on, there's more to it than that. The Holy Guardians have decided to say hello. So, uh, right, you guys are on the far side of the galaxy from me. Not too far away, but not close by either. What do you want? So it's true then you found the legendary tomb of Zarglan, and yes indeed, we kind of do, and we also sort of stole his head. Sorry about that. That as was foretold, the Chosen of the Great Zarglan have at last been revealed. As would have been Zarglan's wish, any unsettled holy worlds near our space are yours to do with as you wish. There are also many devout pilgrims on Celestial Throne who would be greatly honoured to fight under your banner. Oh, Flips, did I just make a fallen empire my sort of vassal? Right, well this is... This is fascinating! So for 150 influence, which I just activated because I assumed I'd get a confirmation button, but no, I've just sort of activated it anyway. Yeah, spiritualist ethics attraction goes up 50%, and a small fallen empire fleet has just flipping shown up. Marvellous. So yeah, I've now got a fallen empire fighting for me. Zarglan wills it! Hooray for Zarglan! Ah, I see, it's a permanent shift towards spiritualist ethics, and I can just summon a small fleet whenever I want to. Do I have to pay for that fleet? Oh, flip, Zarglan's pilgrims did indeed just show up. That's... That's a battle cruiser class. That's... Oh, flip me! Oh, flip! Oh, we're saved! We're saved! This is... Oh, what the cock is this? That's proper large psionic shields. That's shield capacitor. That's neutronium. That's devastated torpedoes and whirlwind missiles and focused archimeters and X-style weapons and high-level bombers and... Basically a giant pile of things. I don't know what they do, but they're amazing. Right, so basically I just more than doubled the size of my fleet, going up from, uh, yeah, about 4,500 thereabouts to uh, about 10,000. Oh, flip. Oh, flip. Hang on. We need to go and have a little look see these lads. These lads, uh, they're pretty big deal, actually. Is this them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that. That's the stuff. That's the stuff right there. 3,500 hull points, 3,500 armor, 7,000 shields. This is... Uh-oh. Okay, it looks like I am actually um, paying for their upkeep. That's probably... Okay. Okay, it, it's just crashed the economy. Okay, they have they have just crashed the economy. Yes. But that's fine. That's okay. It's not so bad because we do have plenty of... New generator districts coming in right now over on Forlorn Hope. That'll be a really great generator world for us. Yeah, uh, scratch that business. We need it to be a, a generator world. Uh, yep, spot on. And give it about 10 years, I can do that again. So every 10 years, I can just make some flipping Fallen Empire ships appear, including battleships. Oh, wow. Okay, now that, that's a pretty big deal, yes. And because we're Zarglan's chosen, these guys flipping lovers. Oh, this is marvellous. This is absolutely flipping marvellous. Now, they did say I was welcome to settle any holy worlds floating around here. Now, I'm not sure whether I can even afford it, but actually, plenty of this territory up here, people are happy to actually let me through. So, uh, all right. I may as well send a flipping sign ship up there. Just, you know, go and investigate a bit. It's going to take you a very long time to get up there, but once you do, uh, yeah, just start scanning all of this, I suspect. Yeah, that's actually walled garden right there. So sadly, that's inside someone's empire already, even though they're not allowed to actually settle it because they would be absolutely annihilated. But if I could get myself a little outpost up here, that might be useful because all of a sudden, I'd actually be a lot closer to some of these guys. 
Plus, it would be a nice backup just in case my entire empire gets destroyed. Because in the end, yeah, even if I do get wiped out, having a little second place to start over, not a bad idea at all. In fact, this is flipping perfect timing because I believe, uh, yeah, some fleets of the Spock Shellacs are literally just about starting uh, to show some interest in our borders. And uh, we can declare war on them if we want to. We do have claims to actually push. And uh, who would actually come with us? Oh. Well, that's interesting. A whole giant pile of people get involved, though. Many of them are so far away, honestly, they're not actually going to get involved properly. Ah, but maybe they would, because they'd actually get involved against some of this. Oh, blimey, I could kick off the biggest war in the entire galaxy. Probably don't do that, though. Maybe, maybe just don't do that just yet. But, I will say, these new fleets, these new fleets are very, very sexy indeed. Begin deploying them down south, all right? You want to take our territory? Good flipping luck. Now, now it's properly defended. In fact, that's massively shifted the balance of power. I now have the same fleet strength as the Corinthians right there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. These guys are now superior. Same fleet power, however. Yes, yeah, screw you. We're now going to be rivals, so naff off. How about you bastards? Are we rivals right now? Yeah, we can be rivals too. So that's just bonus influence for me. Very, very nice indeed. And now that me and you are rivals, uh, yeah, when the opportunity presents itself, I can send some lovely raiding vessels in your direction. Screw the lot of you. Also, I kind of... Oh, I was about to say I need a new admiral, but... Uh, can't quite afford a new admiral right now. Economy's going to need a little bit of work. Just a bit of work. Okay, now it's down to minus 15. Okay, so I've slightly crashed the economy, ladies and gentlemen. But in many ways, this is all good. We've actually got ourselves a fleet that means we're not going to be immediately demolished in the next war. We are strong enough that maybe some of our enemies will think twice before they attack us. And we've also finally got some decent worlds down here. We've got a good generator world right here. We've got a good mining world right here. And uh, any moment now, we're actually going to be having ourselves uh, our first relic world, which is going to be something very, very sexy indeed. In fact, you know what? Let's just actually let you guys get down on the ground there. Get down on the ground. Uh, Fen Habanis is going to be... Uh, very, very important. There we flip in, go. Marvellous. Down onto the ground you go, lads. And you guys want a commercial patch. You know what? Why not? And, oh, blimey, wait, what? What are some 20 credits? I fixed the economy somehow. Though, now food's screwed over. I've no idea what's going on. Wait, no, I know exactly what's going on. Yeah, colony ships are really intensive on the old energy, but colonization's really intensive on the old food. So, everything's under control. It's all okay. Fenhabarnis is going to be brilliant. Once we get it set up, everything's under control. We're not even running a deficit anymore. We can afford these ships. I think we're onto a good thing. Next time, ladies and gentlemen, we need to get our empire set up. We need to get Fenhabarnis running. And then we need to figure out whether this brand new mighty fleet of ours might actually be able to do something. Like, I don't know, take some territory off another empire to expand ours. As wacky an idea as that is, it might be something we could flipping pull off. So, we will see about that next time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John Spit, many a true nut, and this has been Stellaris The Impossible Run. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. John. <laughs> oh, he likes that. <laughs> the Romans touched me. <laughs>